Hey, what's good, man? What's up, Slim? All right, chilling, man. Good. <laughs> this is a wonderful thing. Honestly, I'm very flattered. Um, I am somebody who grew up listening to you. And okay. And a year from being in middle school listening to you, I was like, yo, this is one of my favorite rappers ever. Oh, that's what's up. So, and me being somebody who's diagnosed schizophrenic in the music industry, I think it's very important okay. for us to talk about this and, uh, you know, okay. not talk about all the real things. All right, cool. Let's get to it. Let's jump in, man. Right. Also, hi. I'm his dopest Ethiopian girlfriend. Uh, that's what's up. All right, <laughs> much love. That's what's up. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's cool, man. <laughs> Blessings to you, man. Yes, thank you. All right, yeah. so get right into it. How would you describe your mental health coming up before you got into the industry? Um, Before I got into the my mental health has always been, you know, um, it's been good. You know what I mean? Like, uh, but that was me, you know, like um, things that surround you, you know, you have like lots of different folks or friends or family that might, you know, have like challenging uh, situations when it comes to, you know, you know, things like schizophrenia and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, um, but also there's more than just that. There's, you know, like uh, PTSD type shit, you know? So like, that's kind of something that I can touch on, uh, uh, you know, growing up in the hood, you know, and things like that, you know, there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of, you know, stress from, you know, trying to, you know, traverse through different things and keep your head together at the same time, you know, and stay focused on what you're doing. Um, man, mental health is, um, is really interesting because, you know, some things might even just be like a vitamin deficiency or, or just like different deficiencies or what have you that, you might need to keep you somewhat on course, depending on how the situation is. You know what I mean? So it, it, there's a lot of different factors with, with mental health situations, you know? And what hood are you from? Uh, Los Angeles, South Central. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. So is there any stress that's derived from the competition aspect of hip hop? Because I know back when you started, mm -hmm. I feel like competition was a bigger uh, percentage of what made hip hop hip hop. You know, um, um, people were going at it next. You know, um, competition wise, man, I, I think competition is healthy, in in some senses. You know, um, first off, you got to be in the right circle of people, and that's what I mean by the healthy competition in that factor. Because you know, they say, they say steel sharp and steel. So I only want like the folks that's around me. Uh, when we compete, it's like a healthy thing just to help us to get better. I only, you know, deal with folks in my circle that we're looking to sharpen each other up. We ain't like, you know, competing to tear anybody down or, you know, because that, that, that type of stuff is like kind of like, like an undercurrent of jealousy or, you know, just all the, un the, all the unnecessary things. But a healthy competition is just to help you to get better Absolutely. you know what i mean anything like uh anything else competition wise it's like it shouldn't it you shouldn't really like kind of let it take over your mind at all because you have to stay in your lane or do your lane and do the best at what it is that you do and what you're creating because if you keep looking in the other lanes you're gonna crash your car because you don't know you and you don't know where you are going. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, you have to dance your own dance, bro. Because and, and not worry about I think maybe people maybe competition is there because everybody's trying to like, you know, get the golden bucket of gold, you know, get the bucket of gold or some shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yet they doing it all wrong. You still you got you just gotta focus on what you're doing, focusing on your lane or whatever, and then your crowd will come to you, whatever that is. And it's enough. Honestly, it's so many people in the world that if you just focus on what it is that you're doing for yourself and, and your lane and your sound, and I'll give you an example, like Tech Nine is Tech Nine. You know that. Everybody knows that. And that's his lane. And he he mastered that lane and he's got a whole a audience whole for it. That just yeah. Are. That, and that's their thing, you know what I'm saying? Or you got, I, I like I like Freestyle Fellowship because that's a, a, a crew that we grew up with and they uh -huh. were different from, they were different from us, Far Side, which was different from another crew of folks, but everybody had their own lane and stuff and we all learned from each other, you know what I mean? And we still just 
did our thing and got our own bag, whatever that was. You around know what I'm saying? Time, did you feel pressure? Because I know around that climate in the early 90s, 93, y'all stuff was kind of unprecedented. Um, so when y'all came out to the national audience, do you feel pressure of being like the other rappers in the landscape of West Coast rap? Um, yo, so, you know, the gangster rap was out heavy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think the people that we matched with was like uh, De La Soul or a tribe called Quest or whatever. And that was a good batch to be put in. You know what I mean? Um, so the things that were happening in, in California, oh, Souls of Mischief, I can't forget about mm -hmm. them. Can't forget about souls. Um, <laughs> the Waskels and all them. Waskels, yeah, that's the family. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. Man, how do I, how, you know, like, it's really interesting. There was no, like, we didn't really have problems. I mean, it was problems trying to get in the industry itself, first mm -hmm. and foremost. And that was just hard as heck because the bar was super high, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we fell upon, we got lucky, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? We got lucky and we're blessed to do it and we're blessed to be different. Mm -hmm. It was dope that we was different because, you know, it was refreshing to some people, yeah. you know what I mean? Just to, to, to do what we did or to do what we were doing. And luckily we fell in, we fell in the categories of the De La Soul and the, and the uh, Tribe Called Quests and stuff mm -hmm. like that because I don't, that's kind of what we were shooting for anyways. And mm -hmm. to, you know, and to, it was enough room for us which was the cool part. Mm -hmm. It was enough room. There's enough room for, like, man, if you legit, if you are legit yourself, there's room for you. And, and, and I think we, we, we pay attention to the wrong things. You know what I mean? And, and it's, not, it's not that, it's by accident that we pay attention to the wrong things. Because we think it's supposed to look like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? We think everything's supposed to like, like, because otherwise we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have made it at all. Like if, they, if, if Cali was super, on that gangster rap stuff and didn't want anything else to be in, we wouldn't be in. There's no way that we could have done it because that's not who we were. You know what I'm saying? And our homies, you know, that's who our, our homies were. You know what I mean? But they was looking for us to do something good. And you know what I mean? Like they were supporting us on what we were. That's and that, and that, and that's, and that was the, the most, man, that was the most healthy thing. That was the happiest thing I could hear from, from my OGs. You know what I'm saying? Is yo keep doing what you're doing? We proud of you, man. Can you imagine hearing that from your yeah, from your OG yeah. OGs? You know and what I mean? Y'all was talking about the things y'all had in y'all songs were very personal. You know what I'm saying? So right. I'm pretty for the flattery of like, yo, I'm spilling my heart and you fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Right. All right. Yeah. So going along in the industry, you know, you signed. You know, you you went through your first experience of having a project out and everything. What happened to affect your mental health? Did it did it affect your mental health at all after you know a couple years in? Oh yeah, I, I mean you know because just being uh, coming in this in a young stage, for, I mean we was happy as hell in the beginning, you know what I'm saying. But then when all the uh, you know you got to deal with all the different, I'm glad we weren't younger coming into this. I'll say that first and foremost. But we were at a good age where you know we're smart guys. Mm -hmm. and just traveling, just traveling. We're so smart that we wasn't stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're talking and about... And so with... I'm talking about being in the business and the, and the business side of things and just dealing with lots of different people. It's like we, we made people famous, all kind of stuff that, you know, and, and, and people never gave back kind of deal. Mm -hmm. it, it's like it's, it's what, part of, what part of it do you want to see? You know what I'm saying? Like to, when, it, when it comes to being jaded about the business because yes there's there's many different parts i mean like a lot of different parts losing friends like just all kind of like we big on loyalty we big on like we just we you know we we open the way for you you don't turn around and give back yo you know that's a that's a big one so and then you know like there's other pressures like you know like at, our, at the time our label you know, we were out on the road and seeing all the fans and we knew what the fans were and we was trying to okay. cater to that. And some people in the offices, they didn't really, they weren't on the road all the time. Yeah. So they were just, they knew what they knew and they were trying to apply what they knew on what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And yet, no, we're like, no, we're in the trenches. So please listen to us kind of mm -hmm. deal. You know what I mean? What, what label do you start off with? Uh, we were with Delicious Vinyl. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and they're super family now, you know, like don't get it twisted. I love delicious vinyl. I love Mike yeah. Ross and Rick Ross and, the, and, and the whole team. I'm, I'm greatly appreciative of everything. You know what I mean? Like the good and the bad because I'm old, I'm older now. And, and it, and it takes also, you won't really know. It's, it's a huge, it's a huge um, mental roller coaster. You know, at the same time too. I'm sorry, yeah. my three my three year olds getting the busy. <laughs> All right, go in there. You know what you know what it is, okay? Go sit down, please. Thank you. Oh, no, you want to? <laughs> you can you can sit here, but don't don't make no sounds. You just play with your, you just play with your cards, okay? Thank you. Yeah. So um, it's a it's a it's it's a huge mental roller coaster because it's forcing you to grow up. It's forcing you to, you know, um, you got to learn quick, man. Because if you don't learn, if, if you don't learn quick, if you don't adapt quick, you're going to drown. Mm. You know what I mean? Like the, the actual the actual asphalt will turn into into a quicksand on you because, you know, and there there's so many parts to it, bro. You know, like I, I, this is a mental roller coaster every damn day. You know, I wake every day I wake up, you got to re reinvent yourself. You gotta re, you gotta create something new, and that's if you're not um, uh, if you're not ready to. First off, if you're not creative enough to continue to recreate yourself, you're dead in the water, mm. and that's just real. I have to create things every single freaking day that I wake up. You know what I mean? Because at the no, end of the day, you're not creative enough to reinvent yourself, you're dead in the water. You're dead in the water. Mm. But the, but but and, and here's the deal. Like and it's not to say that. It's not the people. It's not to say that people aren't talented or anything like that, but you got to tap into your into your well of what of what your talent is. And if you don't know what that is, yes, you're going to be dead in the water. But it doesn't mean that you're dead forever, because one day you will like lean into that well of your talent, and then you're gonna you're gonna blast off. That's just how things go. But it, it, you know, it's not going to happen until you stop wrestling with your own mind about shit. You know what I mean? Until you find out, like, yo, this is actually me. This is actually the lane that I'm supposed to be in. You know, what is your thing? Like, for me, I'm, I DJ. That's my shit. Mm -hmm. I'm a songwriter. I could do that in my sleep. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm, a, I, I, I'm an entertainer. I, you know, like, this is, I build this all day. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, yes. Um, it's, a, it's sometimes it's like an insult. <laughs> you know what I mean? For, uh, you know, for you mm -hmm. and whatever that is, you know what I'm saying? So, so are some people um, throughout the game and even right now that uh, you can take heed to and, and uh, you know, you get gems from that help you out as far as the business, as far as your mental oh. health, how to approach things, you know? Well, you know, I, luckily um, in the business, it's like a lot of, uh, a lot of folks is like family, like Be Real, like, you know, De La Soul is like family. Tribe is, you know, Q-Tip is like family. You know, Ali is like family to us because, like, I feel like we, we all, we, we in the same, we in the same game. We all on the same stages all the time. You know, uh, we're, we're touring together. We, we're going, you know, the, the circle is really small. You know, the bar is high. The circle is small. Not everybody's invited. That's real. For a lot of reasons. And, and look, look, cats can be super dope as hell in the industry today. But they're not really invited to the, the, to the table. You know what I mean? There's, there's a lot of different tables. So which one are you sitting at? Mm -hmm. Sometimes so you got to think. A point where you didn't even care, like, how much, pers how much this person can benefit me. It's about this person's vibes. Well, it's about, <laughs> like... You know, like there's times where, you know, like I'm, I'll am i be in a city randomly and then like just recent, like not too long ago, you know, Be Real, like I was in uh, Germany somewhere uh -huh. and uh, Be Real, they were out there in Germany too. Uh, and uh, they was like, yo, come to the show. And so I went and sat on their tour bus or whatever. And we was just talking about life and, and the positives of things and what, what can be or what should be or, or <laughs> they know our situation completely 100 percent like brothers like cousins and if and it feels if something's my fault they'll tell me to get my shit together about it Absolutely. because at the end of the day it's about the team you know what i mean it's about the team at the end of the day hold on one second adonis come on buddy all right you know what it is please go in there okay 
All right, you can sit right there, but you got to sit quietly. It's not time to wrestle. Got it? I don't just want to go back there. All right, y'all time is limited on this. This beautiful interview. <laughs> I totally understand. Let's write this up. So, yeah. how often do you think rappers seek therapy? You know, like we see all the good, the glitz and glamour, and, you know, rap is a pretty narcissistic sport. We're talking about ourselves and you're making everything seem like it's all good. But how often, though, how in cold stores do you think people seek professional help? Um, I don't think that, I, I don't think that they seek professional help enough. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and, and sometimes, you know, like, you want the right help. You don't want the wrong help. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because honestly, you know, like some therapists, you know, that's their job. So it's about keep prolonging your shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> you go in and sit there for an hour, talk about some bullshit, and you never get, you know, some people are helpful. It, it, I guess you just have to have the right person or mentor. So how I look at things is therapy can come through a lot of directions. The ocean is therapy to me. Hiking is therapy therapy to me. Martial arts is therapy to me. You know what I'm saying? And that's just on that note. And then, you know, I got my my, my godparents that I, that I sit with all the time and my grandmother. Like, that's therapy. It's like you being able to sit down and, and um, really be and, and close friends. My old bandmates. Bandmates. Mm -hmm. Therapy. You got to have people that will keep it very 100 with you. 100% of the time and can see what's going on with you and let you know, hey, man, I can see what's, I can see something's going on. And the the face that you're showing me ain't the face that I, I'm feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, you know, therapy is not necessarily a professional. Therapy is not necessarily uh, over medication. You know what I mean? So it's like you have to, I, I remember like kind of, you know, having some issues years ago and at some point you got to pick up your own you got to you got to stand up on your own you know what i mean you think you drown until you stand up in the water is like you know yeah at, at your knees you know what i'm saying yeah but you you was flipping around and crying like you know at some point you got to stand up and that's what therapists are not you know what i mean so it's like you gotta you got who's who's riding this motherfucking chariot you got to <laughs> think of it like that who's riding this chariot are the, horses, are the horses running wild? Do you got one horse? Do you got four horses? Are four horses facing in the same direction? You got to, like, identify what's going on with your situation and how you're going to let this chariot pull forward. That is everything. All right, you know so what I mean? In a nutshell, what would you tell an up-and-coming artist coming up in the industry today about how to preserve their mental health with everything that comes along with the industry? Well, you know, like always go, always go to the basics about everything. You know, they always say if you, you know, if you can't explain things to a five-year-old, you don't know it well, well enough yourself. You know what I mean? So simplify everything. You know, uh, know who you are, because if you know who you are, you know the difference between yourself and, and someone in front of you selling you bullshit. You know what I mean? And, you know, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of parts just keeping your feet on the ground, staying rooted. If you meditate, meditate. Exercise if necessary. Ex exercise all the time. <laughs> and I don't and I don't exercise enough because I take I'd be taking too many, you know, too many breaks. Uh, you know, and I got kids too, so like I have to monitor where my mental state is. I have to take time to myself. So if you if you're doing this or you're doing your hustle, Sometimes it's 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 about the the motion forwards that that do actually happen um, for for your target. As long as you know where your target is, you'll get there. Don't worry about if you get it, like the tortoise and the hare. You know what I mean? So what? We're the tortoise sometimes, but the target is right there, and I know where the fuck it is. You know what I mean? Like that. So that's 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 the deal with that. You know what I mean? I feel this, and I'm very appreciative of this interview. Um, Indeed, man. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I, I, I got one arm holding my little three-year-old back <laughs> it's all, from, from, from diving in. Yeah. Chill out, chill out, chill out. But look, Go ahead. you have a wonderful, blessed day. Uh, I'm pretty sure this information is going to bless the hearts and minds of uh, a lot of people. So, Yeah, well, man. Thank you. Man. I appreciate it as well, man. Much love and, and many blessings to you. All right? You too, man. Peace. Peace. All right, now.